a little out of order here. Solar wind's been above 500. Okay, save this data and show it to you. We've been above 500. I would hurry up and get this in because basically we were even higher than this. Okay, so it's been above 500. We are dropping back down right now, and uh, more from up at Sechi. I'll give you a location on this thing here in a minute, and basically want to go ahead and put this out. Auroral action. They are all. They got a little group over there. It's like they got a little bit more than a half a dozen people that are hanging out and joining the fire and uh, watching the aurals. Hell, some places in the United States, you'll have to have a permit to have a fire, even in the middle of winter like this. <laughs> That's what's wrong. There's too many damn rules and laws. Idiots do idiot things. People, Smart people don't, okay? So, too many rules and regulations in America. So anyhow, live where you still an American could still have a bonfire like that and not get arrested or have the law enforcement come by. So and also basically you get to see somewhat what we're going to be seeing when I go ahead and show you. If you see, is it just a rural action? And you see the red we're getting in there in the rural. And you've seen it with your own eyes. Look like they're having a good time. I miss those old bonfires. I'm going to get back to doing that. That's why I got all my wood cut at my place. Sit around and have bonfire and have little tot toddies and hang out. That's what it's all about. Wild oral action. And we're going to give you some. And that was from Abisko National Park in Lapland. Okay. Over, yes, Norway, Lapland, uh, Europe. Okay. But Lapland to be official. Okay. L A P. L-A-N-D, okay, go visit it, and I just said the name of it, and I can't repeat it because I probably screw it up. Now, basically, this is also something, I'll give you a link to, to spaceweather.com, and basically you take photo film and you put it inside just about anything you want, but usually a, a soda can will do, and they do a uh, time lapse by putting a pinhole in a soda can, and basically what I did is I zoomed in on this, and basically, there is a windmill to the right that's in it constantly in the shot. And I was kind of surprised over time, too. There must be a stagnant old windmill that doesn't move around. They must have it locked out. Because otherwise, I figured we would have seen a blur through the, uh, the photograph of the darkness. So, but you get to see, this is all revolutions of the sun. And I've showed you a photograph like this before. And we go through this, and basically, the high ones are the summertime. Okay, when they started this, basically a six-month tutorial, and that's the sun coming up and going down, coming up in the east, going down in the west, every day, every ring, so you get an idea when they had a cloudy day and so forth, and then basically what's interesting is around the September area, as you move down here, you can see that there's basically, and I'm not being dead on, but you could count the rings, and there's some very unique uh, either they had cloudy days and stuff like that or basically here, but you can get a good pattern and you can go through you can check the weather forecast in that area and basically read it from the weather forecast and the weather history and then look at the, what the sun did that day because there, every pass in here is a basically just like on a earthquake mag recording the pass the, the rise and the highest point of the sun, and then the lowest point in the in the view of field of view of the can, the little little hole in the soda can on the film, and you get the uh, so it's a good cool little thing you can have kids do just about anywhere, any time of the year, winter or summer, you know, just usually do it in a six month pattern, and then go get it and develop the film. So 
Now what I'm going to do is pretty much give you a video of the tail of the comet, but right here I want you to do and remember and go along with me and count. One, first line, two, a short one but it's there, three, there's four, very easy to see, five, There's somewhat one there, but we're going to go ahead and count this as six, seven, eight, nine, okay? Because this is the big one on Venus. Now, what we're going to do is show you a video here real fast. We're going to pop this back down to 400, I believe I'm at, okay? I just did that real fast for to uh, show you the magnetic lines. Now, what we do is I pop down to 400. And actually, I got to find how much I actually have it at. Hang on a second. Got it at 100. Okay, so basically, go back here and I'll put this at 100. And what we're going to do is have a little movie real fast and show you what they're not showing you. And, and pretty much somewhat, eventually it's going to be, but the idea that for right now, and I'm at H12A, okay, and what you're going to end up seeing is down on the right hand side, the first time I go through the movie, now right about now, you're going to see on the right hand side, but over by Earth, you're going to start seeing a little. You see that? Now go through it one more time, and then what we'll do is when we get to the end, I'll just play around with it where the energy's at. And you can see the little energy cloud, and then you can back this up. Always watch on full screen. And then you can see that energy come in, and then I'm going to bring the energy back. Don't, Try not to, I don't, I don't even really, I don't want that to happen, it just does, software, but watch, right here, and you're going to see an energy cloud, it's not the sun, okay, what it is, it should be the tail, because it's a luminosity, you see that whiteness come in, it looks like snow, well it's not a weather forecast in space, that should be the tail of that comet, brightness, and then on the other side of it would be the, hopefully if I can show it, the I've already showed you the photographs. Now here comes the energy. See how that whiteness comes in right there? And it's coming in right here if you, if you miss it. So let me go back to this. Boom, it's gone, right? Click on this one, it barely comes in. There it comes in more. And there it's more. And that's it. So I can make that energy disappear. It's not me messing around with pictures or anything like that. It's just in a row for a movie. This is like they recorded them. And then I can take that energy back. And watch here, so in case you're for some reason missing it. Go forward. You see that energy? Okay. So now what we're going to do is going to go investigate and count our planets because basically we counted eight magneticals, right? And basically let me pop up again. And I'll go to 777 this time. Give me a custom. And it doesn't matter which one I do it on. And I'm actually not even at the same shot, okay? But they're still going to be there. And then the idea, you got to remember, forget Mars. So then that even adds another planet because basically we're supposed to have eight known. Okay, and there's one, two, the third one's kind of faint, but it's a way off planet, but we have found this stuff. There's, that would be three, and then this is four, and there's five, six, seven, okay, and then there's one I'm missing, so we go back, basically we got one, two, three, Four, right there by the blue. Five, six, seven. Well, I thought I had eight before. So let's go along here. Well, that's three to begin with right here. There's one, two, and then this faded one right here. Okay, because I'm going to end up showing you where there's a planet there on that. And then there's four, okay? 
Don't worry about that. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, there we go. That's where I was messing up. Because this is actually, check this out, that'll be Venus. So as we follow them down, you got Earth and Venus on that one. Okay. And then you're going to have Jupiter over on the next one. Okay, and you've just seen that next to it. Okay, that, there's Jupiter's. Okay, then we follow this line down. And it keeps going. i got to try to keep, remember where they're at now. Okay, and that's there. Now, this could be more than likely Mercury, as you see it doing the flare and so forth and so on. Okay, because it should be the closest thing to the sun. Now, the sun is basically behind the satellite, and I'll show you that. Basically, I guess I'm going to have to do that right now real fast. The sun's back here. Forget about it, whether it's, it, it could be behind the solar panel or no matter what, flip the satellite over 180 degrees, okay? Because the sun's shining on every one of these planets, okay? Boom, boom, boom. The darkness is on the back side, okay? So basically, just look at it this way. The sun's behind the satellite, either behind over here or whether it doesn't matter, okay? So now basically what we did is we, I got to pump back into 700 and we're going to find these because this is a planet here and let me show you real fast over to the left that this is a planet here, okay? That's a planet and our other two planets are going to be up over here and let me pump back up to 777. These are really easy to find, one, two, three, okay? And then basically the fourth one, like I was saying, more than likely, this here, here, is more than likely, might possibly be Mercury, but I might be wrong on that, okay? I don't care about being wrong on Mercury, because if we were seeing Mercury before, should be up here close to Venus. So we're finding planets, okay? Because count them, okay? And forget about it being either that, or we're getting awesome views of Neptune, Pluto, and Uranus, okay? And remember, they don't count Pluto anymore, remember? Because they keep on, yes, there's secrets of Pluto like crazy, and I'll be able to do a video in the future on that, too. Rings, uh, weather. Uh, yeah, they've been getting some great looks at Pluto lately. Uh, oh, yeah, strike that Neptune. I am so really sorry about that. I don't have time to edit. But here's one of our planets, too. As we go up, see the magnetical line? You can't miss it, okay? And it goes right down to it. Now, I'm not going to have time in here to be basically probably with the video because I'm going to show you all these planets again, okay? okay? So basically, that's four. Here's five. And remember, minus Mars, okay? And there's that, okay? And there's that other planet over to the right, and we already got that. That's five planets, right? And then we got the other three over here, six, seven, and eight. Five, six, seven, and eight. Let's show you the two real fast that you can really easily see. Okay? That first one's going to be high. I mean, the one on the right, it's right there. There's a planet. Okay? Then we're going to go down, all the way down, past the satellite panel is what we just did, right? Okay? That's the satellite panel, okay? And also, there's a planet because that's going to be close to the sun and also these two here. There's actually three more. Moons, are they? Quite possible. Just maybe part of the, our asteroid or, you know, our, what they call a belt. And there's our other planet. Check that out. And that's not Mars. Okay? Absolutely not Mars because you can't get Mars in this shot. Okay? So there's three here because we're going to show you the third one that's really far out. And basically, I'm trying to remember if that's it or not. I'm trying to get the, the uh, line when we're looking at the screen. And it's here is where that is, and it's really faint. But there's a magnetical line there on that. And I'm thinking basically, because you just go straight off of it. And it's really faint, but it's a magnetical and it's right here and it's real faint and now I'm going to have to play here we go, let's play find the planet because it's a magnetic line there 
And basically it seems to be this right.